Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Morgan Douglas who wanted to see how to cap a certain amount of points that a player can collect from an object. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in my lives and game over sample project. You can get this on my sample project pack one right here. And so while we're in here, there is an object that if we look at it, it's the pickup points right here. And all it does is display a particle effect. And so if we wanted to cap it, we can simply just go and edit this object here. And it's going to bring us to where this happens, where it says wait for player. When the player is discovered, then it's going to get points. So in this case, it gets plus 5,000 points. And then it's going to, after a certain amount of time, go back to where the player can get points again. So if we wanted to cap this, let's just say that we only wanted this to give five times of 5,000 points, basically. The first thing that we would have to do is go to basic settings, and we would have to make this maintain state at the end of scene. So this would be the only way that we could do it at scale. And I'm going to show you how to reset them also if you need that situation. But for right now, we just set it maintain state at end of scene. And that way it will always keep track of its variables. So these variable values will save as well as its state in the uh, action programs right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable and we're going to be called selected counter. This would be how many times we have collected these points. So then we're going to go to the action, and every time that we get this point, we're going to add to that collection. So we're going to say object self collected counter plus one. Now we're going to plus one it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new action, and this says this is going to be remain. And you, you could be more clear even and say done remain. And we'll add a link right here. And this will be if the object self collected counter is greater than or equal to five. And so that way, and just for good measure, this is going to run first because this is a wait. And so what's going to happen is, is while it's trying to wait, this is actually going to ring true and go. But just for safe measure, I'm going to go up here to this processing order and put it at one that this one's ran first no matter what. And then it's gonna remain, and we don't want any of these things to happen, all right? Because when you exit a scene and come back in, it's gonna be in here, and it's gonna run any runtime actions that are had. So for instance, if you wanted to make an effect of it like blowing up, you would want another action before the remain one that leads to remain. The, the one that is remaining, you always want it to be blank. And so we can see this actually play out in action. So if we go and we start this, you'll see that I'll only be able to collect it five times and now I won't be able to collect it anymore. Now we could still see the blue particle. And so if we want to change that, we can simply just go to here and we can hide the particle. So we can just hide particle we can hide all particles if we want. And we'll just do it for this object. Now, this is an example of a runtime action that could be in remain because when you come back in, there will not be any particles. And so this hide particle actually doesn't matter if it's run or not every time you enter a scene. So now if we play test, we'll be able to go in, collect all the points, and now the particle's gone. When we leave and we go back, now the particle is not there. We can't collect any more points from it. All right, so that's how you would cap the point system. Now, let's just say that you have a game where you have stages, like an overworld, like Donkey Kong Country, where you select what stage you want to go to, and each time you go into that stage, it resets everything, and you, you play over again. So basically, in a situation like this, this would be the level. Once you complete the level, you're at the overworld. Now, if you select this level again, you would want these blue points to return, right? All right, so for that, there is another solution. That's in a different sample, so I'm going to get into there real quick. And that sample is going to be right here. It's called Stage Reset System. I'm just going to exit here. Okay, let's open. Uh, don't need to save the changes there. And we're going to do Stage Reset System. All right, and what's going on with this project here is this is representing like an overworld where when you press over, it goes to the stage. So right now you press over and it walks to the next stage. You can't walk around like normal. So this would be Stage 1. Boom, you press a button, you're going to enter it. And now you're going to have a couple things in these stages. One, you're going to have an item. So you see I have a real quick HUD that shows that you can collect five of these mushrooms and then the mushroom disappears. If you leave the scene, 
and then go back in, the mushroom is still gone. These represent enemies. So if that's just representing I killed an enemy right there. And then you also have this, you killed this enemy. These are representing items. Now, the item in this particular case is an item that would only be one time pickup. So you can see that now you have the item boomerang and whatnot. And you can see that I could pick up this mushroom right here. Go back in, go back in just to verify everything is gone. So now this door is representing that you beat the level, however that is, a boss or whatever, and you go back to stage select, all right? So now when you go back into stage one, you can see that the enemy, the mushroom is there. You can see that that mushroom and that enemy's back. You can see though that the one-time item is still not there. So this is like a system to just kind of show you how you can manage your data when you're when you have a game like this. And it's relevant for side view or top view. I just did it in top view because these are just assets I can use. And so let's dig into how I am because the video is how to reset or how to cap items. But now we'll just talk about real quickly how to reset the items in particular. So this mushroom in particular. All right, so the first thing to understand is that in this select here, these are governed by portals. If we go over here, you can see that I have a portal for each stage. I did not set up stage three. You only need two stages to see what's going on here. But you can see that I have a portal for each stage that you go on. And if you go to the transitions here, you can see that it's activated when an enter stage is on. And when, so basically on the input here, on the stage select input, when you are on stage select, when you press A on it, then it's going to execute the action for the player to look like it's going into a stage, kind of like how Mario would do his thing in Super Mario World before he entered. And then it turns the enter stage on. So then what that's going to do is it's going to trigger this portal because one, it's touching it, the player is, and then two, the enter stage is on. And then it's instantly, or actually on the out, on the B side, it's going to turn that off. So it's going to basically reset this stage. So you only need that on the entering stage, all right? And so the other thing that it's going to do is when it triggers, so these are settings that happen when the portal triggers. When it triggers, it's going to plus one to a common variable called reset counter, all right? So it's going to add one. So what you need to do for a reset system is you need to have a variable called reset counter. And this is basically going to go up every time you enter a stage. So you will notice that I have this when we go from stage select to stage one start, but I do not have it when we go from stage one start to stage one end, which is the, between the two levels, all right? And it also doesn't happen at the end of the stage select either. So it only happens in the world to the start of the stage. That's when the, the reset counter is added to one. All right, so now what do we do with that reset counter? So now in each object, let's just say we go to the mushrooms because this is the example that we wanted. So again, in order to make this system work, they have to be maintained state at end of scene. Well, in order to reset them, we need to reset their state that they're in and that, that they don't remain in this state. So what I do is I simply create a variable called self reset counter. All right. You can see that I have the same variable that I used in the point system, which was just the current amount picked. And then I have a max amount instead of just typing in a hard coded one in the runtime action, I have a max amount. And so that way, when I'm checking for the max amount, I just say, is the current amount picked equal to the max amount, equal to or greater than the max amount, all right? But now what happens is, is every time that we add um, a mushroom, it does the same thing. It increases the amount picked, and then it increases the common item of that. And then if it's too, too over to the max, then it's going to go to a remain state, right? So then what this reset common action is doing is, it's checking to make sure if this level is the same level or not. And the reason how it knows that is that this is one of those dead end common actions where I just say if any condition is met and then there's no condition, so it's a dead end. And what we're checking for to enter this common action is we're checking to make sure that the self reset counter is not equal to the reset counter. And so what's going to happen is if it's not equal, that means it's a new instance of that stage. That means that you came from the world map, basically, and that you need to reset this object. And so what happens is, is this triggers, then it goes into the common action, which we can now come out to here to see. And the first thing it does is it equalizes itself with the reset counter common variable. And that way, you know that this 
is the value of this stage. And it doesn't matter what value it is. So for instance, this counter is going to keep going up, 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 up until it can't go up anymore. And variables can get to a very, very large number. Matter of fact, if you go like this, just hold nine, and then you hit enter, it's going to be this number right here. I'll just copy paste and put it in a script right here. That's the, that's the total amount of values it could be. So you never have to worry about this counter like capping out. It just, I guarantee no one is gonna play the game, the, the levels that much. So anyway, uh, you want it to equalize. So let me get rid of this. So yeah, you want it to equalize with the reset counter. And now, now this object knows that it's associated with this particular instance of, of the stage. So we're going to click OK on this, and then it's going to execute object action of itself into the reset state. And so this reset state is going to reset anything that you need. You can see that in this particular case of the mushrooms, it's only resetting the current amount picked. And that way, that way it's a fresh batch of mushrooms to pick when you start this stage. All right. So, and that's really all that you would need for this mushroom. And then this is an unconditional down to wait for player. Now let's look at the enemy template on the reset. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to this setup. And this only happens once ever. So when you enter a scene and this enemy is on that scene, this is the only time that this action is gonna run. Because remember, these are maintained state at end of scene. And so this is only gonna happen once because the reset never comes back here. You can see the link just goes right to here and then back to here. It never happens, it never goes back to here. And so what we do here is we get the start X, which is equal to the X coordinate and the start Y, which is equal to the Y coordinate of this object. And so these are just variables that I created right here. And this is going to keep track of where that enemy needs to spawn every time the stage is reset. All right. And so what happens is, is when you get those coordinates, it's then going to, and this is after a certain amount of time passes, just, this was just for convenience. I didn't want the movement to start instantly. So that was just for convenience. Then it's just going to start moving around randomly. And then when you, in my case, when I press A on it, it's going to die. And so, yeah, that's, it's just going to remain there until, again, that reset system that I told you about happens, which this is all, all that needs to happen is the reset counter. And then it goes to this reset action. Now in this reset action, you can see that I adjust the X coordinate position to equal that start X value that we got right here. And then the start or the Y coordinate to equal the start Y. So this is how you reset its position. And then for an enemy, typically you're going to want to have the HP equal the max HP again, because you want it to be full HP. And so this is just an example to show you that some of these instances are going to require a little more data in the reset. And then you can see that I even have something else here. It unconditionally goes to a brief wait before to match the setup. So this was just so that I could get this after a certain amount of time and have it have a, a animation. So there was no animation in, in this one. And so you, you don't really want an animation right here because you're going to see maybe a blip when you come in, it's going to transfer from where it was on the maintain state to where its original starting point was. And I don't want that. So I usually leave my, this common action and the reset blank just to get a pure reset on it. And so, yeah, that is basically the gist of it. You can see in the boomerang here that I, I had nothing. It is maintained state, but you see, I have no reset in it. So that's why it doesn't reset. And that's why it stays. Now, if you're using 1.0.5 or let me, let me rephrase that. In most cases, you're, you might be tempted to do this. You might be tempted to delete the object and then have the basic settings say none. Well, if you're using 1 point or 1.0.5.11, which is a common stable version actually, then you're gonna run into issues eventually with the save loading system if you're destroying an object. So anytime you run into a situation like this where it's an item that you only wanna select once, Make sure it is a maintain state at end of scene and make sure that you just put it in a remain state that's just forever instead of a, uh, instead of deleting it with a none condition. Trust me, it's gonna save you some headaches. Now they fixed it in 1.0.6, so when that's finally stable, 
which it might be in the future um just you can start using destroy but for right now just realize that it is safer actually to remain it instead of deleting it so anyway i hope this video helped you out if you have any questions comments below steam forms discord will get you figured out with that said i'll see you at the next video